behaviour by the high-profile presenter raise fresh questions about his conduct. BBC News has contacted the presenter directly and via his lawyer, but has received no response to these latest allegations. So that is the breaking news uh, this afternoon here on Sky News. Uh, fresh claims from a second young person involving the unnamed male BBC presenter. Uh, just to run you through this latest statement again, um, the information we're getting from the BBC is this person is not known uh, to the young person involved in the original claims uh, made to the BBC and the Sun newspaper. This is entirely a separate set of allegations and the two complainants are not known to each other. Um, we are hearing a little bit more now, actually. Um, OK, more on those fresh claims. Uh, after the young person, the presenter had first connected on the dating app, the conversation moved to other platforms. At this stage, the presenter revealed his identity and told the young person not to tell anyone. Later, the young person alluded online to having contact with a BBC presenter and implied they would name him at some point. The presenter reacted by sending a number of threatening messages which BBC News has seen. So let's just run you through uh, what we know at this point. A young person has told BBC News that they felt threatened by the BBC presenter at the centre of a row over payment for sexually explicit photos. The individual in their early 20s was first contacted anonymously by the male presenter on a dating app. They said they were put under pressure to meet up, but never did. When the young person hinted online they might name the presenter, they were sent abusive, expletive-filled messages. Speaking to BBC News, the young person, who has no connection to the person at the centre of the Sun story about payment for photos, said they had been scared by the power the presenter held. They said the threats made in the messages had frightened them and they remain scared. The new allegations of menacing and bullying behaviour by the high-profile presenter raise fresh questions about his conduct. BBC News has contacted the presenter directly and via his lawyers, but has received no response to the latest allegations. Um, this is a statement from the BBC. I'll go on to read you the next part of it. It says, after the two had first connected on the dating app, the conversation moved to other platforms. At this stage, the presenter revealed his identity and told the young person not to tell anyone. Later, the young person alluded online to having contact with a BBC presenter and implied they would name him at some point. The presenter reacted by sending a number of threatening messages which BBC News has seen. BBC News has been able to verify that the messages were sent from a phone number belonging to the presenter. The young person's online post has also been seen by BBC News. Uh, now, claims about the unnamed BBC presenter first surfaced in the Sun newspaper last week. It was on Friday night. Um, these are the first set of allegations. Uh, just to remind you, uh, the Sun newspaper quoted a mother as saying her child, who is now 20, um, had been asked for explicit photos uh, by this unnamed male TV presenter and was paid um, tens of thousands of pounds for it. Uh, the BBC has now paused its own investigation into those allegations uh, while the police assess information they have. There is no police investigation at this stage. Right, let's bring in our home editor, Jason Farrell, who's in our central London studio for us. So, Jason, just to be clear, these are separate allegations from a separate young person, but about the same BBC presenter. Yes, and one wonders how the BBC is going to react to this because they've, of course, been asked to pause their investigation into this one individual, but now this is a separate set of allegations, not necessarily criminal. This is a person who is... Uh, in their 20s. Um, they've met, according to the BBC, in a private messaging group. And this person says that they were surprised to find out who it was. Obviously, it was initially an anonymous conversation they were having, but then this presenter apparently, according to the BBC, revealed themselves to this person. That's what we're hearing. And that there were repeated uh, me messages pressuring this person to meet up, which didn't happen. Um, but when this person alluded to the idea that they might name this person online, uh, they were sent a number of abusive, expletive-filled messages, um, and that they were scared by the power of the presenter the, that the presenter held, and that the threats uh, frightened them, and that they remained uh, scared about this. 
Um, the BBC saying there that they believe that they this that they have evidence that this did come from this particular presenter's phone. So um, a suggestion then that there is a kind of like a, a pattern of behaviour, if you like, from uh, this presenter that's uh, been shown in this second example, uh, and that will no doubt add to this investigation. But as I say, I'm not quite sure how they will marry these two together because uh, currently the police have asked the uh, BBC to pause their investigation whilst uh, their internal BBC investigation while the police do their own scoping exercise around the initial allegations made in the Sun to see whether the, there was any criminality. And just to be clear, the allegations in the Sun are that this same presenter uh, with a different individual asked them to send explicit photographs when they were under the age of 18, and that would be a criminal offence. Um, Jason, let's just um, talk about what we know about these new claims. Uh, the BBC have put out a statement, uh, and this second person first made contact with the TV presenter on a dating app. Uh, just remind us uh, what we know happened from that point on. Yeah, that's right. So what we what we understand is that, that you know that clearly this presenter has gone onto a dating app. Um, they've contacted someone in their early twenties. Um, this is a kind of a contact that's done anonymously through the app. We haven't uh, haven't let see what the app actually was, um, and that they've kind of then gone into a private uh, messaging domain in which they've been able to have private conversations. And it seems to be during that period that the presenter has actually revealed who they are. Um, and at that point, as sort of suggested that they meet up, and the, the person saying that they were surprised at who it was, but decided not to meet up. And then they get this pressure, these threatening messages, these expletive-filled messages that the BBC say that they've seen and can verify came from that presenter's phone. I think that is a worrying development for whoever this is uh, and a worrying development for the BBC. Um, and that point, that person has become scared, saying that this person is, you know, has um, certain authority um, and says that they continue to be scared about this. Um, so, you know, we, we get the idea then that this, this is a an unwanted uh, advances that have become quite difficult, particularly when that person has threatened to perhaps go public and say who this person is, um, then it's become even more aggressive. Um, and that, that, at that point, they felt very scared. And they've obviously decided uh, to contact the BBC about this, um, and they've spoken to a, a BBC reporter. Uh, Jason, thank you. Uh, this second young person has made direct contact with BBC News. We understand uh, the BBC has uh, seen the contact between the unnamed presenter and this second young person. Uh, they have verified that the uh, phone number used for some of the messages does belong uh, to the BBC presenter. Uh, they say they have contacted the presenter in question directly and via his lawyer, but has received no response to these latest allegations. Uh, let's just run you through uh, what we know. If you're just tuning in to Sky News, we've had fresh information within the last few minutes. This uh, information dropping just after four o'clock. New claims from a second young person uh, levelled at the unnamed male BBC presenter at the heart of this latest BBC scandal. Uh, this is the information we have. A young person has told BBC News they felt threatened by the BBC presenter at the centre of this row over payment for sexually explicit photos. The individual in their early 20s... Yeah, I'm good, though. How are you? ..was first contacted anonymously by the male presenter on a dating app. They say they were put under pressure to meet up, but never did. When the young person hinted online that they might name the presenter, they were sent abusive, expletive-filled messages. Speaking to BBC News, the young person who has no connection to the person at the centre of the Sun newspaper stories about payments for photos said they had been scared by the power the presenter held. They said the threats made in the messages had frightened them and they remain scared. The new allegations of menacing and bullying behaviour by the high-profile presenter raise fresh questions about his conduct. BBC News has contacted the presenter directly and his lawyer but as yet has received no response to these latest allegations. After the young person and the presenter had first connected on the dating app, the conversation moved on to other platforms. At this stage, the presenter revealed his identity and told the young person not to tell anyone. 
Later, that young person alluded online to having contact with a BBC presenter and implied they would name him at some point. The presenter reacted by sending a number of threatening messages, which BBC News has seen. Um, let's just have a look at some more information. Um, the BBC has also been able to verify that the messages were sent from a phone number belonging to the presenter. This is BBC News putting that information out there. Um, the young person's online post in which they alluded to the fact that they might name the presenter publicly has also been seen by BBC News. Um, you'll remember that uh, claims about this unnamed BBC presenter first surfaced in tabloid newspapers last week. Uh, the Sun newspaper quoted a mother who said that her child, who is now 20, had uh, been given money by the unnamed male BBC presenter in exchange for explicit photos. That money had been used to fund a drug habit and uh, the mother was concerned that their child would wind up dead. Uh, it's important to point out that a lawyer for the young person at the centre of this first set of allegations has since said that the accusations were rubbish. The family, however, are standing by their account. Uh, the BBC Today has been defending its handling of its own investigation into the allegations. BBC Director General Tim Davey giving uh, an interview earlier on this afternoon explaining the timeline of events uh, since the allegations were made to the BBC back in May, right up until what we have seen today when the BBC met police. Uh, no police investigation is underway at the moment, but police are looking at evidence. Uh, the presenter was suspended on Sunday, you may remember, but is not being named because of concerns about defamation and breaching his privacy. The BBC, it must be said, has uh, paused its own internal investigation into what happened while police examine uh, the matter in more detail. I'm just checking to see if any more information has come in from the BBC. As I said, that has come in within the last few minutes. But we